Welcome Urban Warriors. Today we're painting the ruined city from Terrain Crate. So get your concrete mixes and let's do some hobby. <laughs> So here we have the ruined city from Terrain Crate. It's quite a large box that allows you to build a number of different ruined buildings in a modular fashion. So once you open it up, there's a bunch of pieces in bags and there's no instructions to speak of. So we're going to open up all these little bags, dump the pieces out and then I'm going to use a blunt knife to just give them a clean. So any of these little parts that used to connect them to the sprue and these blasted out sections, they have a mold line usually that runs all the way around the pieces. So just clean it up to make it look a bit neater. And once we're done, you can see there's quite a lot of pieces. And the way these systems work is via these connectors. So you get bags of these flat connectors and then there's also a corner one you can see here. And how they work is all the pieces have these holes on each side and the connector will slot into those holes and another piece will slot into those. Um, it took a bit of getting used to, you have to make sure that they're pressed in firmly but once you've got that, um, you can put these flat pieces to join two flat sections of wall together and like you saw the corner pieces to connect the corner pieces. So I'm going to use some plastic glue to um, glue these parts together. So press them in. There's also these other little parts that have connectors on them but also are a piece of scenery as well. So these little ramp looking things. Um, so just get some glue on all of the pieces and slot them together. As I mentioned before, they can be a bit tricky to get together because there are some mouldings that sometimes make these connectors a little bit difficult to slot in firmly. But if you just uh, persist and where there is a little bit of a mould line that's interfering, um, just scrape it away. Uh, you can see here when I first started putting the pieces together they were going flying away everywhere so uh, you have more than enough pieces to get a lot of practice so by the end of it you get the hang of it. So you can see here I've put several sections together to create a wall and then you can also build up so you've got some floor pieces as well so I can create a second floor for this piece and there's also some rubble pieces and they can connect into each other and they also can act as connectors between two wall pieces so here I'm connecting two wall pieces together using a piece of rubble. Um, you can use as many or few of these connectors as possible to get a strong join. I actually found out with the first lot that I made, I actually used too many connectors and I ran out, but you can order extra connectors by themselves if you do happen to run out. So you can see here, you're uh, starting to build up um, quite a large and detailed ruin just using this method of connecting pieces together. Um, I kind of went off the box a little bit to build mine, but you can really build them any way that you want. So once you're happy with your buildings, you can spray them. I use Mechanicus Standard Grey and I just use sort of rapid um, bursts of spray, just keeping the piece moving. Do this outside and in a or in a well ventilated area. I then use Grey Sear and I do kind of like a zenithal highlight here. So just from the top down, just some short bursts all the way around the model and this will provide kind of like a highlight as if the sun was shining down on top of it. So just all over the model. And now I'm going to take some Praxetti white and I'm going to dry brush um, again in a top down motion all the way around those models. So I'm going for kind of like an ice snow base kind of theme. Next paint is a bad and black. I'm going to go around any of the um, destroyed kind of pieces and any of the metal pieces 
I'm just going to roughly pick all those out. Uh, you don't have to be too careful because you've got a lot of terrain to paint and no one's going to be looking at it too closely. So don't worry about being too careful. Next I'm going to use a Dawn Stone and I'm going to um, very heavily dry brush, uh, almost like stippling uh, on top of those rubble pieces just to bring it back to like a concrete kind of grey. Uh, and then I'm also going to stipple all around um, that. Now I'm going to use some metal, some lead belcher first to pick out all the rebar and several other um, metal pieces uh, all over the model. And then I'm going to use some Balthazar gold just to give a different color, give sort of like a pop of color. I'm going to use that for some of the grates and pipes. Um, so I'm just going to very heavily dry brush that across. So next I'm going to use a few colors starting with Mechanicus Standard Grey to stipple on some more battle damage to wear away the paint. So uh, just go all around, especially around where there's uh, some rubble exposed sections and some corners, any bit where you think that the paint's going to flake away. I'm going to do the same thing with Rhinox Hide to provide like a rusty, dirty kind of effect. Um, I'm also going to make sure I do that Runex hide all over the metal again to um, produce a rusty effect. And I started off using lead belcher as well, but as I moved through, I decided it wasn't really worth it. So I stopped doing that afterwards. And after that, that's about it. So it's a very, very simple method that you can use on all the pieces because you do have a lot of pieces you don't want anything too complicated but something that will give a striking effect and looks good on the tabletop so i hope this helps you get more terrain painted to improve your gaming experience